Okay, welcome everyone. Literature research and searches and what we'll be covering in this uh, recorded lecture. Uh, real world, real problems. Uh, Wikipedia, Google One and Google Two. Uh, PsycInfo and a look at the whole of doing a literature search. So let's get started. But before we get started, let's do this. Let me find my pointer. Here we go, my laser pointer. And uh, recorded lectures. Uh, just a couple uh, you know, uh, notes about that. First off, take notes uh, you know, as you would a normal lecture. Uh, think about and schedule time to watch it at least twice. Uh, normal lecture, you can ask me to stop and clarify information. Uh, you may not be able to do that. Well, of course, you're not going to be able to do that here. Uh, so that may uh, you know, increase the length of time that you have to watch it. Uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, also, if you prefer, and this is only if you prefer, you can increase the playback speed. Uh, you do it down here on uh, you know, YouTube and then you can increase it here. I would recommend 1.5, uh, but this is up to you. Uh, some people prefer to you know, go over things quickly and then go back and uh, slow it down to normal speed to take notes. Uh, when I uh, you know, take uh, notes from recorded talks or lectures, I do all of these things. I take written notes. Uh, I usually watch it at least twice. Uh, when I go back the second time or third time, I'll increase my playback speed, but then I'm very often uh, replaying sections uh, you know, to make sure I get all the good information into my notes. And uh, also, this is a required uh, lecture, but uh, you know, uh, informally or option optionally, I would recommend watching my other recorded lectures of informational literacy, and the, I need more articles. Uh, those uh, would certainly help you understand many of these concepts. Okay, so the real world, real problems of this. Uh, this information is temporary. Uh, things are changing. Uh, you know, the library may change the way they do things, which technology they use, which programs they use. So don't be surprised if things have changed. And it's up to you to really be able to deal with those changes. So. Uh, read the library site instructions on doing research. Uh, if that's not enough, Google your question, and Google may be able to give you an answer. Uh, ask a reference librarian. Uh, the, materi the material I'm teaching you now about library searches and literature searches, this is something that the reference librarians do. And so it's not just me, but you can ask them and the better thing is they're on duty you know, until like 8 o'clock at night. And then finally, uh, you may find a better way of doing some of the thing, these things. If you do, let me know what your better way is, and I'll share it with the rest of the class. Okay, so let's talk about you know, doing a literature search or literature research. Uh, you want to get started. Uh, one of the things that I would recommend is Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia is an online encyclopedia. It's open sourced, but it is uh, very high quality. And so why not use an encyclopedia for an assignment to get started? Uh, and so what you would do is just uh, search Wikipedia, and you would use it as a start to your uh, literature search. Uh, but I would not uh, you recommend you continue to use it as you move on to latter, uh, later, uh, you know, uh, you know, stages of your research. Just as a physical encyclopedia, I would recommend it to a student to get started uh, on an assignment, but I would not, uh, you know, recommend it, uh, you know, as something that you would want to put on your, uh, you know, reference list or something you want to cite in your final paper. But it is an excellent place to get started. Uh, you know, many faculty members have biases, uh, really prejudices against Wikipedia, uh, but it is a good place to start. It's just not a good place to continue with or end up at. And as you can see, 
uh, my example uh, search here. Uh, you know, it, it didn't have a exact uh, you know article title to what I was searching for, but it suggested several really great things. Uh, you know, uh, so it is a very good and a very helpful tool on the internet. Next off. In your uh, literature uh, research, don't use Google. Uh, the reason why is this. These are the hits that Google is giving you. Uh, they will give you these scholarly articles up here, maybe or maybe not. Uh, I don't know what the algorithm, algorithm is uh, when they decide to do that or not. Uh, but these hits that they give you are based on your own search history or if you're using somebody else's computer, the search history of whoever has been using the computer. And so because Google knows that I'm at CUNY and I often search for CUNY, uh, they will give me CUNY hits or CUNY uh, pages uh, you know, at the top of my list, which may not be useful to me. And in fact, you know, if I was doing a uh, literature, uh, you know, search on uh, campus sexual climate, these would be not that useful to me overall, these first hits that you see here. Uh, and then after, and of course I go to the AAUP site often, and so uh, they give me AAUP hits at, uh, high on my list. And then after that, the algorithm will give you uh, hits on popularity, and so we assume that the Yale report is more popular than other sites. That's not a complete and satisfactory way to do a, a literature uh, search or to begin your literature research. So again, don't use Google, but use Google Scholar. Uh, just type in Google Scholar into Google and it'll take you to the Scholar site. This is what it looks like. And it only searches scholarly article, articles or scholarly work. And so you see this here. Uh, and these are usually the abstracts. And here is the uh, reference citation or part of it. And by clicking on this link, it'll take you to the full abstract and the full uh, reference citation. Also, you'll notice here uh, they have links to PDF files or other types of files, and this will take you to sites where you can actually download uh, the article. Uh, but what happens when you click on some of these is that you'll go to here. Uh, you'll go to a, a paywall. This is a paywall, what we call a paywall. Uh, it's a wall on the internet asking you to pay for something. Uh, and so you can rent this article for two days for 45 bucks or $200 for uh, 30 days. Uh, that's ridiculous, especially since you probably already paid for this. So what you should do is you should use Google Scholar, but also you should link it to the York College CUNY Library, uh, your account here. And on my uh, you know, Firefox page, I have up here in my uh, you know, toolbar, my uh, you know, uh, bookmark toolbar, a link, a button link to Google Scholar, and it links to this uh, web page. And copy this down or type it into your computer uh, as a bookmark because what it'll do is it'll take you to the York site. And when you do that, notice that you'll see all these extra links. And what's going on is that you're going through York's library site, and York is telling you which articles they, uh, or which journals they have access to. And so if you click on one of those links, uh, you'll be taken to a page that looks like this. And let me be more specific. Let's say you click on one of these links, find full text at York. You'll be taken here. Uh, in many cases, you can just click download PDF to download uh, the article to your computer immediately. You can go to any one of these links to go to uh, a you know, specific 
database on the uh, library site uh, to download from that specific database and also you can send to that is you can send the citation to one of these that is you could print it on a paper printer uh, you could email it to yourself or you could use one of these reference organizing uh, programs and if we go back you see I'm using uh, RefWorks and what these uh, different programs do is they organize the references that you go through. Uh, you're going to be generating a lot of references to articles and you need to record them so that you can go back to them but then again you're going to need to record them so you can determine which are important and which are not important and then also you want to uh, have those references available when you make a uh, reference list for your paper. So uh, using one of these uh, bibliography tools is very important for doing that. And if you want to know more about that, there are links on the York Library site to doing that, or you could just search on Google for help with those topics. So those are some of the uh, down and dirty uh, things to do about a literature search. But let's uh, back off for a second and talk about the whole process of doing a literature search. And I like to think about it as occurring in two parts, getting started and following up, duh. Uh, getting started uh, in a literature search uh, for research is always very difficult. And what's difficult is finding that first article. I find that once you get that first article, then it's easy to find more useful articles. But getting that first article is very difficult. Uh, you can certainly ask a professor uh, you know, for advice, uh, or you could look at a textbook. Uh, I've mentioned Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedia has sources uh, right on the page that you're reading, uh, that is references, so you can find references there. Uh, you could do a search on Google Scholar, or you could use the York uh, Library search engine to do a search. Uh, so you can search by words, keywords, or topics. And these are the general ways that you would try to find an article that you're interested in. And so, for example, uh, what you do is you uh, are interested in doing a research on developing a measure of uh, sexual attitudes uh, on a campus uh, towards different aspects associated with sexual assault. Uh, you start looking around for that first article. You look for textbooks. You look for wi Wikipedia references. You type in key terms into Google uh, Scholar. You type key terms into a library search engine. You get articles. You read them you reject them if you don't like them or you don't think they're interesting. Uh, you keep them and you use like a bibliography tool to catalog them if you like them uh, and then you continue on. Uh, but this is a very you know time-consuming and slow and difficult and like walking through uh, you know molasses uh, part of any type of uh, literature search. Once you get that first article, oh, uh, before I go on, I'd like to talk more specifically about doing uh, Google Scholar searches and library searches. Uh, you're going to be using Boolean operators when you do searches. And so when you type into Google Scholar or you type into uh, PsycInfo, uh, terms such as college, capital A and D, quote, sexual climate, quote, uh, that is very different than typing in plus college and sexual climate. Uh, specifically what's going on with a Boolean search is that you're going to use the Boolean operator of AND. Usually in search engines when you capitalize something uh, it will treat that as a, not a search term but an operator and so what you're telling the computer is I'm looking for articles that have the term college and sexual climate uh, in the searchable text for that article. And uh, I have the term here sexual climate 
uh, in uh, quotation marks. That means that uh, the computer is not going to look for college and sexual and climate uh, in an article, but it's going to look for just articles which have college and the term sexual climate. Uh, using these quotation marks will allow you to uh, target the articles that you're looking for to get very specific. If I didn't uh, use the quotation marks, I would get many more articles that really did not uh, focus on the topic that I'm looking for. Uh, for example, college and sexual and climate, if I didn't use the quotation marks, I may get articles about uh, sex in colleges uh, at the North Pole or the South Pole because they have extreme climates there. And of course there's no colleges at the North or South Pole. Uh, the plus sign is telling uh, the search engine that this term here must be in what you return to me. Uh, and so if college is, if they find something on sexual climate in high school, but, not, you know, but they're not talking about college, that will not be returned. Uh, and then finally, college and, quote, sexual climate, quote, minus, quote, me too, uh, quote, what that will do is this. Let's say that I was doing this search here, and I was getting a lot of hits or articles about the Me Too movement, which is really not what I wanted. So I wanted to screen out those Me Too articles. A minus and then the term will tell the computer not to return those articles. And so uh, if I just put minus Me Too, that would uh, tell the computer minus me and then there's a space, so it's going to say look for two. So I had to put it into quotes to get the whole term, me too. A minus sign tells the computer, do not return any hits with the phrase me too in the searchable text. Uh, so this is how you would use uh, the Boolean operators and the Boolean search in uh, Google Scholar and in PsycInfo. Also, PsycInfo has a thesaurus. Uh, and that will help you search for terms uh, and you uh, find the uh, thesaurus and search on it uh, in the upper area of the PsycInfo search page. Uh, that's always a good start. Uh, the thesaurus will suggest to you uh, official terms for what you're looking for which will be more helpful. Also, PsycInfo has keywords and subject terms which means different things. And one thing about finding an article, uh, if you see a keyword on the abstract page you're interested in, it's usually hypertext linked. So click on it and it will take you to a search uh, of articles with that keyword. And then you can also uh, turn it right around and use those keywords in a Boolean search. And if you'd like to know more about Boolean operators and PsycInfo, and searches and Google and Google Scholar and searches. Uh, search Google and ask Google for help. So now we're past the beginning stages and we're finding articles like crazy. So uh, what are you going to do? Well here's the way you're going to really find a lot of articles. Look backwards. And that is look backwards in time from when that article was written. So you're looking at an article from 2019 the reference list of that article is going to contain uh, dozens of citations of articles that may be important to you. Uh, how are you going to know if that article is important to you or not? You're going to have to read the article and see what the article says about that reference. And then you're going to have to look up that reference and read that article, or at least read the abstract to see if it's useful to you. Boy, that's a lot of work. And that's why you want to use a, a bibliography tool like RefWorks so that you can organize all those articles you're finding so you don't like duplicate work and start reading articles you read before. Oh, I've done that. Uh, so that's how you look backwards. Looking forwards is the, the opposite of that. That is, in uh, Google Scholar and PsycInfo, they have a time-sided link for each article and what they do is this let's say that you read an article from uh, 2015 and you say wow this is a great article I wonder if anybody's done research on this uh, topic well time cited will tell you that 
you click that, time sided, and it will show you articles from 2016, 17, 18, 19, and 20, which have cited the article you're reading. Wow, that's really cool. So that's a very useful way of generating more articles to read, uh, look at, and decide if they're useful to you. And finally, uh, you have to remember interlibrary loan is there. Here at CUNY, it's very useful. It occurs very quickly. Uh, and again, look at the uh, library web page to learn more about interlib interlibrary interlibrary loan and how to go about doing it. So again, this is just the beginning. What you need to do is you uh, need to look at other sources to learn how to use these tools because they are complicated and I'm not going to explain it all in a 15-minute uh, video, uh, but you, this is the beginning of uh, you being able to find information and find information which you know is accurate. And I believe that's the last slide. It is. So take care and have a good day, everybody.